literally while the door's open the helicopter stopped above my kid's mum's house and she's looked at me and gone that's for you and it you idiot and i'm like it, it might be how do you get caught up in an undercover 80 million pound cocaine sting yeah i've been doing drops like all over the country you need to hang about you're gonna get good money this job and i'm thinking they already get good money so yeah. i wonder what this is you sent something come on top tell me that whole day the day of the job is literally overnight it all just unraveled job's gone over we're f***ed. he's gone f***ed, leave the country on the run i went flew to thailand f***ed, and hated it and i was in my pants like baseball cap on head down thinking i'm gonna get jumped any moment because of facial recognition and that got out of the car perpetual white van pulls in geezer gets out of the van and i'm not joking he locked eyes and my face dropped and his face drops and he was uh Frankie, welcome to the show, mate. Cheers, Dodd. Thanks for having me. Yep, very much looking forward to this one. It's an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> Some story you got, mate. Yeah, a little bit. It is, isn't it? Um, let's roll all the way back. Where did you grow up and how did you get caught up in an undercover £80 million cocaine sting? Oh, uh, do you know what? I was brought up in a little town, Epping, which is in Essex. Lovely town, loads of money in that area. And uh, not where I lived. I was in a little <laughs> council house, down a little council house street. It's, uh, they probably... In that street, everyone probably owns their assets now, but it was uh, down the bottom of our road, like a social club and a football pitch where the local football team played that I dreamt of playing for. And then I played for them when I was like 14. Who? Oh. Lindsay Street. It was like Sunday okay. League. Yeah, yeah. But you know, when yeah, you yeah, run yeah. down as a kid, you think one day yeah. I'm going to play for them. So yeah, and, uh, so weekends, like my dad would take us down to the social club and we'd just be at home, one or six kids, like three bed house. But yeah, it was, do you know what the council house is years ago that were built with the bigger gardens mm. and the rooms are bigger? Not like that, where everything's tiny. Mm. But yeah, just a nice little town in Epping. One of six, but four brothers. Fucked around at school, messed about. So, you know, ended up being a bit of a, we were, we were pretty wild because down the end of our road was farmer's fields and forests, far as you could see. So we were like, not wild as in like misbehaving mm. wild, but just like free spirit kids sort mm. of thing. Me and my brothers, I'm closer with, I've got an older brother and then two brothers who are the same age. And uh, yeah, just started going out and epping and then started going on a night out. And I don't drink, I have a glass of wine or something now and again, I don't drink, never done gear or anything like that. So someone would ask one of the like, well-known, not well-known brothers, but it's a small town, yeah. epping, really yeah. small. And they'd say, you know, do you know anyone can get anything? And I knew somebody from that world mm. and it's just snowballs like that. I just, you know, a couple of mates, get them a couple of wraps or things like that. Mm. And then you, you know, you start, when someone asks something, you can quickly get it. And then people think, hold on a minute. Mm. And then the people I'm getting it off are like, oh, this bloke's getting a little bit busier. And then they, you know, you get a few tests or whatever, you know, be here this time. And I'm always there at that time. And what sort of age were you when you started, this started happening? happen? Do you know what, I probably, maybe late teens and then but i had this, my son when i was really young mm. how so old? How old you? yeah so i i sort of knocked it all on the head late teens it's only a couple of years i was doing that and then uh my son so i was 20 when my son was born mm. and then you know i started scaffolding so you, you got to get a proper job <laughs> and uh once like so i'm traveling into london on the train and then Having to, like, we've got a house. My kid's mum at the time, she had a flat before I met her. And then that deposit paid for a deposit for the house that we were, lived in. And then, you know, you've got to grow up and pay bills. And I was thinking, fuck, I'm on apprentice wages, mm. paying bills. And it just, you know, just thinks something's got to give. And I remember, still to this day, blue stripe Tesco food, coming out of Tesco, it's fucking trolley full. You've, everyone's looking at you. Do you know, you think, oh man. Everyone's looking at my trolley, <laughs> like blue striped food. I know you shouldn't think like that, yeah. but that's what I thought. And I remember walking out thinking, fuck this, I'm not doing this no more. And then I literally made a couple of phone calls and then I started doing it again. And then within, I reckon, within, from that time, six months, maybe a year, maybe, no, so my daughter, so my daughter was born, so she's one. Yeah, maybe a couple of years doing it for myself. And then you just get the phone call, do you fancy this job? 
So how long were you scaffolding for and going straight straight and narrow? So I was scaffolding from the age of 20 and I got arrested at 25. Okay. So I was scaffolding for like four years. Yeah. I didn't even give it a good shot. Because if I, you know, if I stayed in scaffolding and I become a scaffolder, which I am now, yeah. well, got, just got back to, and uh, you'd have been earning money enough to... to to pay the bills, pay live the a bills, nice good lifestyle. Yeah. 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 No, and were you finding, were you finding that four year period, you're like 60, 80 pound a day, under pound a day? Fucking so hard. Yeah. Dodge so hard. Yeah. Do you know, you're like, you, you, you're, you're walking through the train station, like pushing people through the things you've got to squeeze through. Yeah. And all the lads just take the piss out of me saying, oh, putty sandwiches, I used to have like, we, we paid our bills, you know, I'd, me and the kids' mum were like passing ships. I'd come home, she'd go work. And then uh, I remember running, do you remember Benji's in London? Mm. It was an old fashioned coffee mm, shop. Yeah. And I used to go and get um, all the sugar, just fucking neck the sugar, just to get a bit of energy. Cause yeah. I just started this job and it's so physical. But it suited my personality because it's physical, like all the lads having a laugh and a joke, you're outdoors. Yeah. So it wasn't as if like, I'm living on the streets mm. fucking struggling, but it was just hard. But just trying to make ends meet. And in the back of your mind thinking, hold on, I was serving up a little bit of gear earlier. I could do a couple of errands here and there and well, get the same exactly. money that I was doing, working five hours, 12 hours a day. Yeah. Five days, 12 hours a day. So it was scaffolding and then it was, listen, you know, I'll earn a couple of hundred quid on the side. Yeah. And then that'd be all right because that'd just keep, you know, keep me above water, yeah. get some food shopping and things like that. And then uh, it just snowballs, mm. doesn't it? What was the point where you were like, hold on, really, I can't carry on doing this. I'm grafting hard, getting up at seven in the morning, yeah. working my nuts Early off all day, yeah. getting home knackered, not seeing my wife, not really seeing my kid. Mm. What was the point where you think, hold on, I could actually earn <laughs> a lot more money by serving up a little bit. And what normally happens, as we all know, you serve up a little bit, your mate asks for one G's, he comes yeah. back, his mate wants three G's. Before you know it, you've got a quarter in for someone. Before you know it, you're yeah. before you know it, you're know you thinking, I could actually replace my job here by doing this. Yeah, it got to that point. Okay. It and got how to long? that point okay. where I was earning. So that took me a year. Got yeah. to that point where I'm thinking, right, I'm earning that out of scaffolding, I'm earning exactly the same out of it. But the thing is, I was I was getting home from work, running their errands sort of thing, and then getting home, still in my scaffold clothes, going to bed and getting up in the morning. Yeah. Because I suppose it's greedy. Mm. I could have maybe chucked one in or whatever but I was still my money was going up a little bit with scaffolding but you know you're talking 20 years ago yeah so like when people say 60 pound a day and all that 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 weren't bad 20 mm. years ago but now you couldn't even fucking get a McDonald's yeah. there, could you yeah, yeah. but how old are you today 39 39 okay. yeah and you got you got nicked when you were 26 25 I got 25 nicked. okay so you were scaffolding for four years when was the point when you're going I'm going to knock the scaffolding in uh, knock it on the yeah. end now and actually go down the cocaine route and actually earn more money for less hours yeah so my me and my kids mum split up and it was uh you know nothing nothing bad happened on either side just fucking had enough for each other you know yeah. too much pressure and then uh I started scaffolding I was living at a mate's house and I just thought you know what I've got nothing to lose now and then literally I give up scaffolding and within a week I was probably earning, you know, a grand a week myself and then just got the phone call to say, do you want to do some bigger drops? But you've got to drop that out. So you say you got the phone call. Did you get the phone call from someone you knew or was yeah. it a friend of a friend? A friend of a friend, but I knew of them. It was in that world, you know, like you all sort of... Uh, Clock each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I knew, I knew exactly who it was. And do you remember what that phone call was, that first phone call? Yeah, just... Do you, uh, I want to have a chat, do you want to come and have a meet? And I was just like, yeah, fair enough. Was I he a Londoner? From my area, yeah. yeah okay. And uh, Essex and that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then just went and had the meet and then pulled up to the meeting and think, fuck, what, you know, what, you're in two minds, what yeah. am I doing here? Yeah. And then, yeah, and then I was offered the, op like, you know, job opportunity as such. And, th and they was off, like, you know, minimum was a week than what I took scaffolding a whole month. Yeah. And it was more than what I was earning out of doing it myself. And it was a little bit like, not like a job, it sounds fucking silly, but it was a little bit like, we'll tell you what to do and you get your wages at the end of the week instead of doing it myself, yeah. going pubs. Because I used to, I never really went out, didn't mm. go pubbing. So you were, were, you, were you using yourself? No. So no booze, no, no, no cocaine? I don't, I don't drink, I, a drink don't agree with me. Okay. I went out partying when we were younger, yeah. like lads drinking, but that I think that was before... So before having my kids in, you know, 17, 18, and then when I was, I was literally knocked, 
going out on the head when I when I got with my kids' mums. Mm. But I was only drinking then anyway. And, you know, all my me and my brothers were in the pubs yeah. in Epping and one of my, my oldest brother I always knew I could drive through Epping and pop in a yeah, pub okay. and he'd be so in there. So you were bang on the... It, it, take away getting nicked and whatever. You were bang on the ball. You weren't using. You weren't. didn't have your mind all over the gaff. You had a straight mind to go, I know what I'm doing right Yeah, it now. wasn't a conscious decision. Yeah. Like, I'm, right, I'm, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to do this. Yeah. It's just, I think, it was. my character suited that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean yeah. at the time? What did he offer you in that first meeting? Just said, do you want to do, do you want to do a delivery job? Do you want to do more, uh, big, like, bigger drops? And it'd be really good money. And, and what did he offer you? How much? It was it was at the start. Yeah, it's not at the drop. It was at the start. It was okay. like a, I give you like a couple of grand a week. Yeah. And then from there, depending what you do and where you go, and I wasn't you know I didn't ask questions. I just said fucking yes yeah, straight away because we we had no money. My family had no yeah. money as kids. And when someone offers you that amount of money. Mm. And it's, I think the insecurity, I'd done absolutely shit at school. Mm. And I think even now, all this time later, I was looking for a job recently, but we'll get to that. Yeah. And uh, still that insecurity is there. Like, mm. you know, I ain't gonna be able to do a, a decent proper job. Mm. And uh, and uh, the scaffolding, I thought, quite oh, hard work. And then uh, he offered me that, he offered me the job, you know, you'll be driving every day. So but, you were driving every day, you're, ta you're taking packets? Packages around, yeah. dropping off, picking up, dropping yeah. off, or just dropping off? Dropping off, picking money up, and then dropping off. Okay. And then dropped off, uh, but I had, to I had to get rid of my, my, my sort of, what are they called, fucking line, people called them now, didn't they? But I had to get rid of my, my bit, I just, you know. Get rid of your what? My phone that I, right, that okay. I built up, okay. I just got rid of it. Okay. Were you driving around in your motor? Yeah, it was, uh, I you, used to hire cars. Were you changing number plates and different drops, or did, no, you, no, get, or just, did you get complacent? Of no, I before? hired a car. Yeah. From uh, like a car hiring place. What was it called? The, the biggest one, Enterprise. Yeah. And I'll just ring them up every couple of weeks on a swap a car. Yeah, okay. Which is funny because uh, later on, I dropped a phone down a fucking uh, drain outside when all this shit happened. Not having a clue, the police went back and um, interviewed the car hire place because one of the car hires was mm. used in this and uh, they said oh we thought he was a bit weird we watched him drop a phone down the drain <laughs> fucking good criminal I am not I <laughs> <laughs> all on camera but when, no. my, when you were only going to hire cars it don't really matter if you're hiring cars or not were you whacking it in your name this is the thing you can't people think like you're going to get a car change the number plate do this if you if you don't look like a straight goer you're mm. going to get pulled over all the time yeah that's what I that's what I was taught but, you're, taught. but were your cars you're hired yeah. in your name yeah. 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 I picked him up with my driving license and a friend of mine, I give him cash who didn't have a clue. I just said I was working for cash, give him cash and he bought them on, like he hired them on his credit card. Poor yeah. He got fucking raided off the back of it right. as well. Okay, we'll get really to that. Really nice player. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what was that? How long were you doing that for then? A year. A year. So I was doing it for myself like four years. Yeah. I dabbled a little bit when yeah. I was younger and it sort of gave me that little, uh, this might be. And I ain't slagging no one off, but then... They're not brain surgeons, these people. Like, mm. I'm looking up to people driving Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Range Rovers thinking, oh, I could do that. Yeah. You know, they, why can't I do that if he can? Subconsciously probably thinking that. And then, you know, I, I, I don't, I wasn't surrounded by criminals as a mm. kid. And there was no, in my family, like a, a lot of these people get involved in crime. It's probably following the footsteps of their, yeah. like Lewis, you've had on here, yeah. following the footsteps of their dad. Yeah. Mine wasn't like that. It was all glamorised in my head from the films. Yeah. And it was just purely money. Yeah. Purely, do you know, you just, I do not want to be fucking skint anymore. Yeah. And how long did you, how long were you doing it for? The bigger drops. Uh, yeah, it, the bigger drops. And did you know what the bigger drops were? Or were you just nah. given the packages? Were you just going, yeah, take that to A pick, to B with? Pick, yeah, pick that up from there, drop it off and there. Drop the money. And, you did, and you knew these packages were getting bigger and bigger as time went on? Well, there was always in bags and things. And this job, I, I knew it was serious because there was just a bit more seriousness around it. And it was, you know, you need to hang about, you're gonna get good money, this job. And I'm thinking, fuck me, I already get good money. So yeah. I wonder what this is. And I, I knew it was big. Like this, I'm not sitting here like playing Mr. I didn't know what I was doing. I knew what yeah. I was doing. Yeah. I knew what I was involved in. But like a lot of people would say, you know, what are you doing it for? like later on in, in the story, but it's, you know, they, they, you get in with these people and then you're making loads of money and you, you're in like a closed circle. 
You think you are. And you think you, you are. You think you're in a closed circle. And you think you're living a yeah. life that no one else yeah. lives. Yeah, 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 you're yeah. in a bubble. Yeah. And I was literally, I, 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 I'd have my mates from school mm. and then I'd have my little mates, uh, a bloke that I, because I never dealt, I could have walked past the top bloke and not even known in Epping yeah. or whatever. So I dealt with one bloke. Mm. He gave me my drops for the day. And then I went and picked it up. And is that the same out. bloke you first met who made no, that no, phone call no, to? No. He passed you to someone else. Yeah. I don't know how it worked, but it's all I I learned a hell of a lot more in prison talking to everyone and um looking at my paperwork. There's just a hierarchy. Yeah. You know, everyone's a buffer, isn't they? And how long I want I'm interested in this twelve month period, you're dropping off, earning a pound yeah, note, a couple yeah. of grand here, a couple of grand here every mm. every couple of days or whatever it was, yeah. and you got bigger and bigger the packages. What was the point when you knew it was all come on top? The actual job, just did, were you sensing? Were you sensing something? Did any paranoia kick in to go? Someone follow me? No, I was I've told. Been, I was told by by somebody. My phone's in been it. bugged, or no. my car's been. No, I was told by somebody in it, in that in in that little world that the, this job, this like this job ain't right. What some this big extinct, job? This yeah. big job. Okay. And I was like, you know, you just think, well, at the time, this is my job, and I'm getting paid for it, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. But I was just told that something ain't right. And I didn't listen. Who, to, who told you something went right? Someone close to you? Yeah, who knew these people and gave you the not heads not up. family close, but yeah. someone I've known for a long time. Okay, give me the heads up. It's giving you what? Do you remember his words? This stinks. Just completely stay this, away this. from it. This stinks. Wow. And I sort of looked and said, like, I can't. Yeah. It's like you telling me it. Yeah. But I work for you. Yeah. And imagine me coming back to you and saying, I, I'm not doing. You can't tell them people I'm not doing this. Yeah. They've organised it, but I don't know how long these things take. Yeah. And you turn around and say, I don't fancy it today. Mm. They'd say, are you fucking kidding me? Mm. You, you know, you get sacked with a black eye. Yeah. Did your gut feeling ever sense anything? No, but when, so the day of the job is literally overnight, it all just unravelled. The day of the, so yeah, I've been doing drops like all over the country. Give me an example, Everything give me example of some drops around the country. From where to where? Down south, yeah, like deep down south, yeah. all the way up to Northampton, Birmingham. Yeah, so a big, bigger. Uh, so when you big were area. when you were driving, did any paranoia kick in at all? If I get pulled over now, I'm. I'm Do you know what? I don't know whether it's me being, I don't know, thick. They, uh, I treated it as a job. I was very cool. One side, of the the most stupidest thing. I, uh, I so. I used to go all the way deep, deep down the south of England. Whereabouts? Like past Plymouth and all okay, that. Okay, yeah. And uh, I would uh, fill my car up, stop at a petrol gauge that I knew on the way that didn't have cameras, an old-fashioned one where the yeah. old bloke comes out, yeah. and then that would get me back. Night before, I've gone and got McDonald's. I can't remember exactly what it was. I either went out with my mates or picked my kids up one night because I wasn't living with my kids. Went and got McDonald's. Done something else, I fucking broke down and I could see the motorway. Do you know you're thinking, shit, I'm gonna run out of petrol. And I'm shit myself shit. And I've looked at looking it wasn't a motorway, it was an A road, so it might have been one of the A thirty nine mm. or something down that way. Mm. And I'm looking thinking, oh no, I can see I can in the distance, probably two miles away, and a fire uh, fire engine's picked me up, took me to the petrol garage. What are you doing down here? And I'm thinking, my accident, I'm thinking, yeah. fuck. And I was like, I'll just come down and see a couple of mates. Yeah. And they're like, oh, all right, all right. And then uh, they've drove me back to the car and I put the petrol in my car. And that was, I was thinking, shit, mm. like, be cool, be cool. But, you know, I, I think... Was this the night before you got called? No, no, this no, was, this was like occasion. you're saying, this was a bit of, okay. these are the times when you uh, your bum's going yeah. a little bit. But the night, so... Or well, the, these are the signals that him up him up there is giving you a little warning. Yeah, but, uh, yeah thinking say, Hold back. On a minute, there's a few things going on. Don't if I was right. older yeah. and not so... I'd say probably greedy, naive, naive, yeah, naive. If I was brought up around criminals, yeah. I probably would have seen You'd the have effect because yeah. you know you are, you know you're thinking I'm not going to get arrested yeah. or yeah. all that, you know. And I do think if I went all the way back to school and somebody come into this, is what I'd love to do, somebody come into school and sat down with all the naughty kids. There's so much talent wasted. Yeah. It's normally the naughty kids. Yeah. The all disruptive the, ones are the ones who have got the creative minds. And they reckon they're, they're businessmen. They're not. And, yeah. Um, yeah, they're not. They're not being stimulated enough. Yeah. Say, for instance. But if uh, uh, like an elite. But I found that when I was in prison, like mm. how fit a body can get. Mm. I was doing spin spin classes, passing out, and waking up on the floor, mm. and things mm. like that. Things that like only athletes do. Mm. And um, anyway, yeah. 
So back tell, to, so tell, so tell me, you, you had a few warning signs here. Tell so me, don't go and don't do this job. It's some extinct. Yeah. So I went and done it. So the day before, what so date? I, what date was this? This was, I'm f- I think, twenty first of April, two thousand nine. Twenty first of April, two thousand nine. You were twenty five years old. Twenty five. And you sent something come on top. Tell me that whole day. Yeah. So the, so I got the phone call saying it's today. I've, I'm hanging about. I've been told to hang about. So the job's today. You're going to pick some money up. We're going to pick some bags up. I found out it was money afterwards. You're going to pick some bags up. Meet the geese in Faden Boys. So I've gone to Faden Boys. Gone in. There's a, a really nice bakery there. Gone in the bakery to get myself a sandwich because I knew it was going on a long drive. Didn't know where. I was just told you're going up north. It was, it's all a need to know basis on that. And I was, t- I was told I'm going to follow a car. So I've gone in the bakery. Walked in the bakery. There's a bloke sitting in the window. It's like a bay window. And he's got outdoor clothes on. He's got, do you remember the old camera bags that were square? Mm. And he's got that on the floor. And I quickly glimpsed, and you're paranoid. Yeah. Not paranoid to a point where you won't leave the house, mm. but you're looking about. Walked in, and a woman behind the counter said, it's, it's definitely fate, all these things. A woman behind the counter said, uh, not that I acted on it. A woman behind the <laughs> counter said, uh, um, does anybody want anything else? Like implying someone's overstayed their welcome. Mm. This is what I'm thinking yeah. in my head. And I'm not, I'm not, like sharp in the way of academically, but my brain's mm. always going. So I've walked out, got my sandwich, all that, because I thought I'm not going to stop on the way just in case. Do as you're told, follow the car. Walked out and glimpsed his coffee cup. And do you know when coffee's been in the cup for ages yeah. and there's, like, there's foamy scummy mm. around it? Glimpsed that and thought he's been there a long time. These are like, do you know, they're milliseconds. Yeah. And I quickly glimpsed him up and down. He had a skin coloured earpiece in his ear. And then uh, I thought, fuck. So I'm in too deep now. I'm going to pick the money up. I've got round to the bloke, some bloke in a silver car has got out. Where you, were you in the country? Baden Boys. Where's Baden, that? Still in Essex, Essex near me, okay, near yeah. Epping. Yeah. Little, it's a tiny little village. Yeah. and uh, re- It's such a little village that they don't have streetlights. There's a thing that Faden Boys is not allowed streetlights, that sort of village. Mm. And um, met this geezer. He's given me two Hes- big Hessian bags. I put them in my boot and he said, just follow me. So we drove. So say the bakery's like there. Mm. Drove round to the pond area where I met him. As we've turned around to go back out, it's sort of like, I'd say a couple of miles from the M25, Wolfen Abbey. Mm. And then a uh, matey from the bakery is standing at the um, pond now. One with the earpiece. One with the earpiece okay. in a fucking filet and like orange jacket. But I told the geezer when I picked, got the bags off of him, I said to him, listen, you know, I've been told this is a bit dodgy, this job. Mm. I've just seen some in and he's, don't worry about that, we're going mm. up north. And do you know when you think, you know, been in that world long enough now and you sort of know Essex that part of Essex not like every, everyone in Essex is, is up to no good but that part of Essex and you uh, you think well maybe it ain't for me mm. maybe it's for this is the naivety and maybe mm. the, the, the um, not being guided I'd say um, you know it might be for someone else in this area so I've just uh, got in the car followed him all the way up pulled in the car park and then I parked, and they're at their chat. So they've gone and met these two geezers. These two geezers get out of this Land Cruiser, like rough looking geezers. I've been waved over, I've drove over next to them, got out, and I'm, as I'm getting the bags out, the two geezers in the Northern accent were like fucking like swearing. And I've been on enough, enough meets in, in, in that world. Like people just talk normally, mm. as your kids, blah, 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 while you're handing God knows what over mm. to each other. It's, it's, it's sort of done obliviously to maybe not make everyone shit himself and uh, these blokes are swearing I've quickly glimpsed them and, and they're not wearing because you've either got like trainers or jeans on or a nice watch something you don't you know you don't uh, only people you know God knows people get into that world and not buy themselves something yeah. like that I just thought they look rough but I've never really met northerners yeah. and I just thought they might be just rough northerners mm-hmm. they look the part like look like a, a, the typical gangster which yeah. is probably uh, ironic now and then um I've handed them over. They're all like chatting away. Got back in my car, drove off, and then probably so that's Pontefract Castle. So that's how far away it was. Where's that in the country? So it was above Leeds. Okay. So I've gone so all the trek. way. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was okay. a good, good few hours. Yeah, yeah. So coming back, uh, I've looked and thought I'd get some petrol. So pulled in to this petrol garage in Leeds. Did you when you handed over? Did you take a load of dough as well? No, no, nothing. I've handed, handed over bags. Over well, it wasn't gear, so I've handed over bags, which were, I found out later, it was 328 grand. It was a part deposit. 
So they've got to give him a little bit of money uh, because you ain't, no one's just going to hand you over fucking loads of gear. So it was a little part deposit to say like, keep your half of the bargain. So you keep. were driving from Essex up to Leeds with £328,000 in your yeah. car and you didn't know what you were carrying? I f no, I, I, I knew it weren't gear. And I, I, had a, I had a rough idea it was money because of the way the job was. Now, if I'm ever dropping gear off, you just drop that off. Mm. But I was just told, you know, this is a bit, it just had a bit more seriousness around it, this job. And it was a bit of a bigger job. Mm. Didn't sort of realise that, how big. Mm. But I knew how a lot, you know, by the cars people drive and all that. Do you know, you think there's big money in it. You, if you didn't know what was in it, did, did you open the bag to have a little look? No, was no, no. Was it zipped up? Was it, what was it, a sports bag? Two was Hessian. Hessian inside? So two Hessian shopping bags yeah. with beer cans in them. On the top, beer can, just beer can boxes in them. So what's happened is they've opened the beer can boxes, took the beer out, put all the money in, and put um, in the close it back up again. Close it back up and put four cans of beer in. Because when I used to do it, it'd be hidden in things like shopping. Because if you get a random pull, they go through your boot, glimpse, and then carry on, and yeah. then you're shopping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're getting properly pulled over, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's fucking, I don't know, up your ass. Yeah. It doesn't matter. They're gonna find yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So it was just a random sort of thing. So yeah, I've just uh, two Hessian bags with beers in. And uh, this is, I've seen my paperwork, the photographs for it, the uh, beer can and all the money was stashed in four four beer can boxes. Wow. No, yeah, two so big you, bags. So you dropped off, you thought nothing of it. You had, a another, little, you had another gut feeling, you're thinking, oh, yeah. well, there's a couple of... Yeah. I've been told it's a bit of a dodgy job. Yeah. I've seen that thing in Fading Boys, but do you know what? You, Did sounds, you drive back naive. and go, I'm okay? Well, no, so uh, another thing, so Sam, just quickly, get Sam, yeah. being naive, you sort of look up to these people. So when they tell you gospel, no, it's not for us, you think, well, it ain't for us. Mm. They're, they're organised at their company. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. And then um, pulled in the petrol station. So we're coming back from Pontic Rec Parcel in Leeds, pulled in the petrol station, and then uh, pulled over. Blokes pulled in behind me, the silver car bloke, I followed up there. And he said, are we doing? I said, I'm just going to get some petrol because I don't know when the next petrol station is. And I'd like, I think just under half a tank. And I thought if I fill up, I can get home. He's gone, all right, I'm going to get a drink. And I um, got out of the car, put petrol, white van pulls in, Geezy gets out of the van. And I'm not joking, Dodge, uh, not as close as we are, but we locked ties and my face dropped and his face dropped. And he was uh, the bloke from Fading Boys. It was the undercover officer from Fading Boys in that calf. And I, 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 honest to God, I would lay anything down and it was him. And uh, I've looked at him and he's looked at me and I was like, fuck. So I've gone running in the petrol station quickly and said, that's the geezer from the cafe earlier. And the bloke's gone, fucking get away from me. And I'm, you know, when you're flapping around, I'm flapping around the shop, like picking up a drink, putting it back. So I thought, what do I do? So I went into the toilet and um, <laughs> I've gone into the toilet and I've sat in the toilet and I thought, I'll just sit in here. Cause I've been not knowing anything about that world. I thought I was getting arrested then maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And as I gone in the toilet, I thought, right, hold on, the petrol station's here. We've drove in and the toilet's there and there's a window. So I thought, oh, I'd stand on the toilet and there's a little toilet window and I could see the exit going out. Only to know that quick, like, geographical thing mm. that you get. You think, hold on a minute. Looked out and I could see the exit. So I watched the silver car gone. I watched the van gone. I thought, right, whew, pressure off. And they, I don't know what that is, but I just thought, oh, I'm, I'm all right now. Gone and paid my petrol, got in the car, drove back, got back to my flat, or, or, or where I was staying and rung the bloke that I normally talk to. Told him blah, 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 and the fucker said, you, I think you're imagining it. I was like. Mate. But even then, I was just like, all right, fair enough. And uh, you know, you, you, I, f I, was in, I was in too deep to step out. There's no way in a million years I could have said, oh, I don't want to do this no more, lads. Because they'd be like, are you, are you kidding me? And realizing what I got nicked for, like they was fucking right up the, right up the chain, really. Mm. It weren't just like local drug dealers, what they were doing. I knew I knew it wasn't because how far I was driving sometimes, but um, yeah, and then yeah, a couple of days passed and then a really weird thing happened when I, I used to get my kids on a Wednesday. So I think that happened, so the Wednesday after that happening, I took my daughter to a place called High Beach and it's not a beach, it's like a forest there, a really ancient forest. And uh, everyone goes there when it's sunny park their car and have barbecues in, in the back of their vans or anyway and uh took my i still remember it now took my son and daughter there because I had, I had a daughter as well with the, with the same woman and um she was like one and the sun was set i still remember it the sun was setting it was really nice they were playing with each other like nicely as brother sisters do not fighting 
and I was sitting on the log and my daughter come over and I was crying, I still remember it. And she said, um, what's the matter, daddy? Uh, my son was a little bit older, so he would have sort of clocked it. I said, oh, I've got a bit of hay fever. And she went, all right, and just walked off. Cause I knew then I fucked up from that, from that day before, yeah. I just knew. And then a Wednesday after, so this marries up with my paperwork, but I don't know. I don't know whether this is true or not, but the Wednesday after, I've got my kids. So I used to have them weekends and a Wednesday night, just take them for dinner. I'll take, in the summer, it'd be nice. You could take them for an ice cream and that. And then uh, I was coming home from Harlow to Wolfen Abbey. I was living in Harlow and Wolfen Abbey, and that is probably 15 miles. I don't know. don't know exact, but it's say a 20 minute drive, maybe a bit longer. I'm driving. And I'm driving around, I've looked, and I'm like, fuck. And I thought, is that an helicopter up there? And I was a little bit, and it was a couple of weeks after that job happened, and in my head, if you do a crime, you get arrested straight away. Yeah. That's how I think I used to think. So I'm thinking I got away with it, and I think, oh, there's an helicopter up there. And I thought, oh, it ain't for me. Carried on driving, and uh, I'm still looking. I think, right, it's still behind me, and I'm in Epping now. I think, right, fair enough. I thought, I'm, I, you know, I've never flown an helicopter, but I'm sure they're fucking faster than that. I'm in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> carried on, carried on. I'm asking my son, which sounds scummy, really. I'm asking my son, Louis, look out the back window. Is that helicopter still there? And he's like, yeah, daddy. And I think, shit. Cause... And then I've got into Wolfen Abbey, up Shire Way, which is near Wolfen Abbey. It sort of dips down into the forest. And the helicopter disappeared. And I thought, ah, oh, weren't for me. Got to the kid's mum's house, but not knowing. So it dips down. The helicopter must have been behind the forest. I found out since in prison, helicopters can watch you from like three yeah. miles away. yeah, yeah. yeah. Pulled up to a little cul de sac, pulled up to my kids' house, got the kids out, got them in um, in their house, and said goodbye. Literally, while the doors open, I got stopped above my kids' mum's house. And she's looked at me and gone, That's for you, innit, you fucking idiot? And I'm like, It, it might be. And she's like, What? I'm like, It might be. I, I like, something's happened. I didn't tell her that I fucked up recently. I just said, Something's happened. And um, so, yeah, so she said that. And as she said that, four or five police cars shut the um, cul-de-sac off all jumped out and I'm thinking Fuck, I'm not getting arrested beating up whatever in front of my kids so I've stepped down their steps and gone everything alright and I'm slowly walking towards them but I'm not like trying to look aggressive I don't know it's all subconscious mm. and they're sort of shouting at each other and then one bloke's shouting and then I, I said is everything alright and then one of them shouted I couldn't hear what they were shouting but they was panicking and the bloke's going oh no reason no reason um, have you seen someone covered in blood like he was making it up on the mm. spot and I was like uh no no we haven't and uh he's gone oh all right then all right and then they've got in their cars and drove off and then the hel helicopter took off looked in my paperwork years later a Wednesday night about seven o'clock which is the time we just dropped the kids off um someone's gone to pick the drugs up so the money I've dropped off somebody's gone to pick the drugs up and that um that night that that time when somebody's gone to pick the drugs up, they've called it off. Somebody said that something ain't right and called it off. And it was a Wednesday night, about seven. And it's roughly, it was roughly around the time I dropped the kids off. I don't know pinpoint, but mm. I thought, you know, maybe that was my time. Old Bill were gonna nick me. Cause I was still in that same car. And that's that's when I went to the, uh, went to the uh, next day, I went to the car people. I said, I want to swap cars. Cause that, after that helicopter thing, I thought, nah, this, you know, if I swap cars, I might get nicked, well, I fucking idiot. Mm. And then that's when uh, the police went to the to the um, car hiring place enterprise and said, uh, oh yeah, we thought it was a bit weird. He fucking dropped a phone down. And mm. So you accidentally dropped the phone down there when no, you changed I, car? No, so I changed car Yeah. and the phone that I used for that job yeah. that I was using, like you'd swap phones all the time. Yeah. All the time you'd swap phones. Yeah. One time I went in, into a phone shop with a geezer like it was not on the payroll, but he knew, and I come out of a bin bag of like mobile phones. Yeah. Imagine, you know, imagine seeing that. Yeah. And uh, and I got rid of the phone down down the drain, and they see see me do it. Must so they clocked you throwing the phone down the drain and enterprise then, and then car they told people. The old bill. When the old bill went there, yeah. because I got arrested in a hired car from a friend, a friend of mine hired a car for me. I gave him the cash, yeah. and he got fucking. Well, I get to that. He got raided yeah. and all that shit, and um. Yeah, so they said, yeah, that we thought that was a bit suspicious. So the week went past, you done the drop, 328 yeah. grand. The, the weird helicopter the guy, things happened. Yeah, but the free, the guy who you followed up there in the silver 4x4, mm. when you pulled, uh, Just a silver car. Just silver, a sil yeah, silver, silver, silver motor, you followed up there. And when, the you, parks, when you parked up to fill up the petrol, you went, you said to the geezer in the silver yeah. car, you said, that was the geezer earlier with mm. the earpiece on. Mm. 
He didn't react kindly to you, did he? No. He's who just, was he? He was just a bloke. I don't know. He was a bloke who I think called it all on. I don't know what. So he called it on just to make sure the money did get dropped. Yeah. But he didn't want to do it himself. He got you to do it. Yeah. So I think I limited the risk of him getting pulled over. But cause that's what I thought. I thought if he's going to the same place, surely he'd take the money. So who knows? But he was like, get away from me. Wasn't he? Didn't he? Wasn't like in a way of like fuck off. He yeah. was like, right, get away from me, yeah, okay. sort of thing. Like, and then, uh, yeah. So then, and then you come back down. You thought the helicopter was after you. Well, I, I found this out years later reading my paperwork. Yeah. I thought, oh fuck, that helicopter was probably for yeah. me because that's a similar night. But then, did you do any other drops after you got the paranoia kick in? Did you do any other no. drops after? Did you go right? I've got to stop. I, I did. I did one thing and picked some money up from a bloke. You know how much? I think it was like. 20, 30 grand I picked up from okay. a bloke because he was at a certain place and he couldn't leave it and I, I okay. was sort of near and there but it was all it was sort of a small place I don't know whether it was a week or two weeks mm. and then someone went to pick the drug up the second time and that's when the fucking shit hit the fan so tell me the day so the, when, the sh when, the, when the shit hit the fan so the drugs the second time somebody's gone to pick up the drugs whereabouts were they? Uh, um Leicester, Leicester way. Okay. And supposedly all these phones turned on in this car park in a, because you know people say, um, oh don't take, don't take your personal phone with you and all that. But my barrister told me like, they'll just say you've used a, a pay as you go. Yeah. Like, well, like what the fuck? So yeah. they reckon all these phones got turned on in a car park in um, Northampton or somewhere like that, all at the same time. And they reckon the phone, two phones were hitting the mast, the phone mast, at exactly the same speed driving up the motorway. So they were saying that these two phones were next to each other in the car. So things like that is mm -hmm. just through the cell sighting. And then uh, the police, and then some bloke's gone to pick the van up. Someone picked a car key up. They didn't know that was, a bloke with a hat on, baseball cap on. And then another bloke has picked the van up with the drugs in. He's got in the van, fucking turned the key and drove off. And they reckon, They've took the, um, they reckon they've took the, what's it called, the immobilizer out, yeah. so the van shouldn't have started. Mm. But then a mate of mine's a mechanic said if it still had life in the battery, it would have started. Yeah. So he's driving down the motorway with, fuck it, well, what it was, it was 299 kilos of coke in the back of the van. Police have, could have just lost it because he's driving down the motorway. So this is, I've read in the paperwork, uh, the armed police have pulled a van over and jackknifed a lorry to, to, to not jackknife a lorry, like pulled a lorry, told him to pull over to block the motorway. Because if he got away, imagine him getting away with that, mm. the police, they'd yeah. all get fucking sacked. And this was soccer, serious organized yeah. crime agency, yeah. the best of the best. I think they're the national crime agency there. Yeah. All hand-picked. Imagine them, like, yeah. some fucking couple of idiots getting away with... So where were gear. you at the time when you knew this had happened? Or did you not know this had happened? So I got... I was in Epping, and I got a phone call saying, that job that you'd done recently has gone over. Which so the means, job that you drove up the money to, they were yeah. bringing the gear down. So that money was a part payment. Yeah. And then what's happened is somebody's gone to pick the drugs up to bring, them back, bring it back down to Essex. That's what it, like, I realised oh. from the paperwork. And you, when you got that phone call, job's gone over. And I'm like, what does that mean? He said, well, we're fucked. And I've gone, right, well, what do I do? He's gone, I can leave the country. I don't know. So I'm like, shit. Went round my mate's house and said, like, a, a, a job I'd done a little while ago. I think one of my really good mates I told, like, really, really good mate, I told him that, like, I used to give him, not that, not details, but say, like, I think something went wrong the mm. other day. I said, remember what I said the other day? It's gone over. He said, what are you going to do? I said, don't know. I said, fuck no, it's going to run. And I had some money saved up. You know, I, I, I was living on, on mate's sofas for a little while when I split up with the kid's mum. Mm. So it was only a year from mm. splitting up with the kid's mum for a year. And then I, I, I was living in like a mate's flat. And I just said like, I've got to go. And then that was it. I didn't tell me, I told my family I fucked up. And um, You told your did your Did your mum and dad or your wife know? Wife know? I, I wasn't with anyone then. But did anyone know, even your ex-wife or your ex-missus, did she know what you were up to? They knew what I was doing for a job, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah and your mum and dad and people like that. Yeah, it was sort of like, a, I'd say to my mates, or I'm going to work, and they'd say, oh, fuck off, I work. Yeah. But they sort of knew. Okay. But I was, I was, I was a, you know, an adult, supposedly an adult. Yeah. I was 24, 25 Were you years blase? Old. Did you get blase with it? I was, I was always, where I didn't drink and smoke, yeah. and I was always on time, that's what pretty much all you can do. Yeah. 
I didn't go out drinking, giving it to big in nightclubs. Yeah. Didn't go around telling everyone, trying to be this, you know, big wannabe gangster. I literally, who I am now is who I was then, yeah. but just a bit fucking wiser now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so you had the phone call. Job's they, they gone got, over. They got, they got pulled. Pulled over with 299 I didn't know all kilos of, this. of cocaine. It's what I found out when I got arrested. Didn't even know this. What was the time period between when they got a tug and then you got the phone call of then you getting the tug? That day. I think uh, that I think the job went over. Yeah. Because all the, in in that world, you have a couple of cars, didn't you? Follow yeah. like um, in front and behind the yeah. car, and then one down the road yeah. and that. Somebody's rung up and said he's gone over a night. I think they tried to one of them tried to smash into the, one of the police cars. One got away, I think. Yes, whilst read uh, in the in the paperwork, and then obviously someone's made the phone call. Not the bloke in the van, because he's got a fucking yeah. gun at his head, probably. Yeah. And uh, someone's made the phone call saying it's gone over. And then we've just told it's gone over, no details. I was told it's gone over pretty much. Not You're on your own, but pretty much gone. And then did you go, right, I'm getting out of the country. Where did you fly to? Well, no. So I I, I, I went on the run. I told them I'm going to go on the run for a little while. I went and stayed at a hotel locally. And then I thought, right, what can I do? I'll go down to Cornwall. And I live like a bit of a beach bum. You know, young people down there. Went to Cornwall and didn't realise how much of a night... Like how much police are in Cornwall, Nuki and all that. And young kids just getting randomly searched. I thought, I can't do this. Mm. So I ended up thinking, right, what do I do? What do I do? And I thought, uh, I could go over to Europe, but then I'm thinking, will there be a European warrant? Mm. And I'm, I didn't know how much was involved, and it probably was a, well, there was a European warrant. And then uh, I thought, right, what do I do? What do I do? So I, I thought, I'll go, I went to Canterbury, thinking I'll go on the train to France. Lost, I uh, like shit myself, lost my bottle. Thought, right, what do I do now? So I went to, um, I went over to Holyhead. And then from Holyhead, I went to Ireland. And in my head, I'm thinking, if I fly from Ireland, the English, think they're English police, I've got to get all the way to Ireland to nick me, I've already taken off. I'm thinking, if I flew from Stancy to Heathrow, it's all ready for you. And this is, because I didn't have a criminal background, these mm -hmm. are the things that I thought. Yeah. Well, like I'm thinking, you know, you're watching telly, you're you're thinking things through, and I, when you're on the run, like you're doing nothing anyway, mm -hmm. sitting on a beach, planning, 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 thinking, what do I do? Yeah, and then so I got over to Ireland, and then I on a ferry, and then I sat at the airport to the last moment, and I flew to Thailand, because I thought I went to Thailand thinking more so the beach bum thing. I thought I could go to Thailand and live on nothing, yeah, blend in. Yeah, yeah, and you know, just be a proper yeah. backpacker. Yeah. So yeah, went on the run. Uh, well, on the run, I went, flew to Thailand. Fucking hated it. Hated it. I was just, do you know what? I was never paranoid doing that job. I'd done like things that were dodgy, but never paranoid doing that job. And I was, I was paranoid after the job's gone over because I thought the police are watching every move. Like when I went to Ireland, I had to go through Liverpool Street train station. No, Houston is it to get a tra mm. uh, train up to. Hollyhead, might have been Houston, and I was shitting my pants, mm. like baseball cap on, head down, thinking I'm gonna get jumped any moment because of facial recognition and that, because it was, it was in 2009, but all that was out there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, went to Thailand, to Thailand and hated it, it was a lovely country. How long were you there for? About three months, I think. Three months. So I went to Thailand and I come back June, and I think this job, so I dropped the money off, sorry, March and the drugs got picked up early April, yeah. so there was a couple of weeks grace. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it was June when I got arrested. So April, May, June, so yeah, about three months. What was the value of that? All the drugs that got the uh, pulled over. So they said it was a hundred. Uh, they said it was eighty million pound street value. So they oh. they work it all yeah. the way down, but yeah. to that sort of level, I don't know, could have been ten mil or something like that yeah. to that level, yeah. but. Uh, and then in Thailand, were you were you there three months? Were you thinking, I just want to get back to England? Hopefully they've mm. forgotten me. Or were you speaking mm. to people back home going, no. what's going on? What's going on? No, right do you know what? I made a conscious decision of not ringing home and talking to people. Because imagine like my mum's house mm. or my kid's house getting raided by the police and they fucking boot your door down, don't yeah. they? And they've got a lie to the police. It's scummy, isn't it? Mm. Even then, like, I knew what I was doing in that job and I, I sort of knew it wasn't me. As, I know it sounds silly, but yeah. not I was the split personality, but I was thinking, I, I want money, I want money, I could do this for a while, and then I could go and do what I want to do, yeah. sort of thing. But, uh, y you know, it's just... Uh... And then what made you come home? So, 
I was I was out there, hated it and hated it, and then I rung home. So I rung home twice while I was out there. I rung to say, listen, I'm in Thailand. And they was like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I've had, I've had to go on the run, I'm in Thailand. And they said, what's happened? I said, listen, there was a big, big job's gone over. And I knew it was a big job, it's not that big yet. And um, like, everyone's gonna get nicked. And they're like, okay, fair enough, blah, blah, blah. Rung the second time and I rung my kids and their mum's come on the phone. We didn't really get on and she's come on the phone and I thought for her to come on the phone, something's happened. She's gone, your mate, Sven, who um, rented the car for you, has been raided and he lives in probably one of the best roads in Epping, but not like flashy, like posh, yeah. old money. Yeah. I think someone opposite of me owns a massive theatre in London, yeah. like proper okay. police fucking booting their door in and all that. And uh, I was like, shit. I said, and he's the fellow you gave the cash to to rent the yeah. car for him. I, he was my mate and all, yeah. and I lied, like I lied to him. Shit, really. Did you? Yeah. Shit, mate. You know, just said, "Can you hire a car for me?" Thinking I was doing nothing wrong. Yeah. Just a prick, really. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, he's got raided, and I said to my, I said to my kid's mum, like, "Will you bring the kids up to see me in prison if uh, I come back?" And they're like, well, "You know, you might not go to prison." I said, "Listen, they've raided that house. Well, you might not go to prison for a long time anyway." said yeah said i don't want to sway your judgment and all that but louis my son louis i hate saying this my son louis was she said he was looking out the window and me and my son was inseparable even like when they, me and their mum wasn't together a year before all this happened we was inseparable and uh she said he was looking out the window and he said what's happened to my daddy where's my daddy gone she you think give me a lump there and i'm just like what a scumbag so i said i'm coming home and uh i didn't tell no one didn't tell anybody that are in that uh, completely cut ties with one in that other old world and just come home. And I was on the flight, I got a flight from, I had a load of Thai bar on me, it's fucking mad. I had like a million Thai bar on me or something. And uh, when you get arrested, you've got money on you. They put it on your canteen sheet in prison. And like, I got a canteen sheet with like two grand on it and prisoners hand it out. So they're telling everyone, oh, he's got two grand on his canteen sheet. It's all fucking bollocks, but don't you, know, you think, fuck so. When you were in Thailand, and you were thinking, I want to come back to England. You're thinking, just arrest me. When I, I land did. back, were you thinking, just arrest me because I can't carry on like this? So I, d I did think like that. I was just thinking, I was on the aeroplane. There was always a glimmer of hope, thinking, you know, I might not get arrested. Or stupidity. It's not hope, I don't think. It's stupidity. Hope's a nice word, isn't it? Not getting arrested, ain't. So I'm thinking, I might not get arrested, but I might get arrested. Uh, you know, nothing bad might happen. Just didn't really, uh, probably didn't think about it. I'm quite good at not not thinking about things and getting on with, you know, I've I kept my call with that bloody fire engine thing and other things I've done, just kept my call, just treated it all like a job, never panic. And then, um, yeah, so I was coming back on the airplane, there's a woman next to me and there's a, little, a young Australian lad, like my age, I'm telling him where to go, go and watch Wimbledon because it's coming up and all that. And um woman next to me, chatting away, just nice, and everyone, it was a long flight because I remember we didn't stop off. So everyone was shattered and then we've got up and I was, I listened to, I was listening to Class FM when we landed because it was the only thing, and it was the English Country Garden, still remember it, and I said, can everyone, so we've all, every, it's all stopped, you know, everyone gets up, oh, does that lovely sigh. Where were Heathrow? Heathrow Airport. Okay, yeah. And um, they said, uh, can everyone get back down, uh, sit back down please for health and safety reasons. Oh, can everybody sit back down in their own seats for health and safety reasons? And I thought, two, two minds again, I'm thinking, oh, this is it. And then I thought, well, might not be. But I've been on enough flights. I, I know I sound like a fucking idiot, don't I? But mm. there's always that, oh, it might not be. Sat back down in our own seats and the blokes go, well, oh, what is it? Oh, I don't know. I've looked up and two armed police have come on the aeroplane, but they're airport police. Mm. And then two, like well-dressed people afterwards and they're talking to the air hostess and they're pointing over to my bit and I'm like, oh, oh it is me. <laughs> I think, oh fuck, it is me. And they've come walking down the aisle and I think, yeah, it's definitely me, definitely me. And they've literally, the airport police have stopped there and said, are you Frank Stebb? And I said, yeah, I am. And they're like, you're nicked. And I'm thinking inside, yeah, no shit. Yeah. And I've stood up, thinking, right, let's go. And the one behind's like, get back in your fucking seat. And I'm like, what? My, my bag's up there. Shit myself. Do you know you're thinking, I've, I've just shit myself. <laughs> I hope no one smells it. <laughs> it's poor Australian geese. It's like, fat. And, 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 and there's women, and there's people screaming on the airplane now. Yeah. And I'm well, like, whoa, whoa. And the soccer well, agents put their hand, uh, put their, I don't know whether it is, is it military and, and police? They put their hand on his shoulder, so he lowered his gun. 
I just saw a hand come on his shoulder. There was a woman soccer agent and a man soccer agent, it, like smartly dressed. He took me off the plane and then stopped at the end of the plane and then handcuffed me and then stood me there and walked everyone past me. And they said, said, just wait you a minute. And I'm looking at the floor thinking, oh, oh God. Well, you know, coming back from Thailand, God knows what people think. Yeah. I've smuggled a fucking ladyboy bag yeah. or something. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, got one in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> up in the top thing like that. And uh, no, in my luck, it wouldn't be a ladyboy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so, uh, do you know, just I'm looking at the floor now, feeling like shit, really. And thinking, fuck. And then we're walking out and I've heard them like radio through, you know, we're going to take him out the front. And I said, I I'm not telling you what to do but I think my kids are out there and my mum so I said they was going to come pick me up and I said if you can this is my flight if you can't I'll hang around for an hour and I'll get a thingy and uh, I said I'm not sure and he's going to ask alright the airport police wrap your coat round you because I didn't have my coat on in the airplane wrap your coat round you and I was like Phew. and a soccer agent said one minute and he called the airport police, bloke into a room, the airport police come out, his fucking face is white, like it's been told off by the headmaster. He's gone, oh, we're gonna take you out the side door. And I sort of looked at the soccer bloke and give him a nod. And then later on, call me what you like, after all the interviews, like three o'clock in the morning, the soccer agent who done that, who was interviewing me and all that, it was him and a, a woman. He, uh, I said, I found out through my barrister, my kids were outside and I shook his hand. I said, thanks, because that's yeah. fucking traumatising for your kids. Yeah. Imagine coming out. Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, it's, my, it's my mates. Like, my son was at an age where he weren't an idiot. How old was he? Five. My daughter was like one. But my son was like sharp five-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, from a young age, you wouldn't even have to hold his hand at a road. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, so I uh, try and tell, like, my son, he, he's educated because he, he's been through it all with me, really. Yeah. Like, they was... Uh, walking to visits and they'd know to put their, my mum used to say, oh, they'd go in and put their arms out and put their feet up. My daughter used to come running in and go to the like playground bit, but like this is what I try and say like to these young lads now, every time you turn the fucking news on, something bad's yeah. happened. And this is what really happens. It's none of that bollocks. I'm getting loads of money. I've got Range Rovers. I've got this, I've got that. You've got to get through all that shit. And imagine not going to your brother's funeral. Mm. It's, um, and our family are really tight. Yeah. We well, imagine not been. seeing your son and daughter allowed grow to up, yeah. grow up. Yeah. So the lessons out there. Anyone listening to this, if you are getting caught up in this, what I'm, this, is what this is what happens. This is what happens. This is like a normal lad scaffolder yeah. selling a couple of grams, couple of grams. Jack the lads, well yeah. known in your area. Yeah. And that this is literally how easy. I'm not saying I was dragged down that path because I knew I was going. To, uh, no, I knew you what made I was doing. you made your own decisions. But yeah, yeah, what yeah. I've learned learning from this is you didn't know what the consequences. I'd were. I had no adult guidance no. in the way of like not um, like my parents. My mum. I was one of six kids. My mum is the best, strongest woman you'll ever meet. Yeah. But she's bringing up six kids. Yeah. And the school. I was naughty at school, so I was dyslexic. Yeah. And in them days, you're told to sit at the back of the class, mm. isn't you? But so, nowadays, you might get. So you were there, you got nine years, you did yeah. four and a half years. Mm. You said a minute ago, I just want to roll back that, but you were in, uh, you went to Belmarsh. Yeah. What's the difference between the Wormwood Scrubs and Belmarsh? Wormwood Scrubs is, um, there's a lot of um, shit goes on in Wormwood Scrubs, as in like prison, like aggro and all that, but there's, um, it's dirty, it's old, dirty prison. And, uh, but Belmarsh, another level. The fucking pressure. Every time the door opens, the bell goes off, you're banged up. And uh, I, I, one time, the screws, this geezer, a big African blokes, wrapped his hands up, attacked a screw. They couldn't get him off. He's bit the screw's cheek off, and the screws are booting him and booting him to get him off. And then uh, I'm like, they're fucking booting him. And you can feel the pressure of all the prisoners yeah. pushing forward. Because in 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 um, Belmarsh, is like a, a central hub thing. There's like spurs off, like mm. wings, but they're spurs. And... Um, I've, we've all been banged up and then the screws come to my door. Screw that I got on with and thought yeah. he was a nice bloke. Come, what did you see, Steadman? And there's fucking screws behind him with blood on them. I was like, nothing. Yeah. But of course I saw nothing. But yeah. going back to the cat A, they, so when I got cat A, they, so your visitors get vetted. So that goes, so you, you write, a, you write say, I want Dodge uh, to come and visit me, your dress. That gets sent to the home office. Home office sent it to local police. Local police come around and interview you. The local police send it back, it takes ages. I'm luckily, luckily, within like a couple of months after me getting cut aid, my brother dying, I, I, my kids and my dad got, um, just because the police luckily was in the area, got um, okay to visit. 
but my mum and sister weren't okay to the next Christmas. So how long did they? How, how many? How many? How long have they got until? Can they visit you once a week? When you're on oh. remand. Yeah, and when so you're this is when you've been got guilty. nine. How yeah. long? When you got your nine years, how many times they let a visit you a month? So when you're when you're convicted, it was like once or twice a month you get a visit. But um, and that's when when I got convicted, I was so we got put we got cut aid into Belmarsh, and in our case, we got moved to Woodhill, and we got put in the high security unit in Woodhill. And that was fucking like, like the weirdest place I've been. It's really calm. Not you walk into prison, there's just noise and doors and clinking, and you sort of like feel at home. You've been there a while. Mm. When is this trip? So, uh, Bronson was in the the AAA unit next to us, and the cells are smaller than this room. Not the cells, the yard, cage roof, and everything. And you you like, and you're in a. It's, I don't know if it's called a close supervised centre or unit, but it's a, there's a prison within a prison in Belmarsh where the, the work, like the highest ones in the country are. Mm. This is the second one. And there was like, um, who was in there? Two geezers, hit men in there mm. that were, um, do you remember years ago, the motorbikers shot them while they're driving, yeah. shot another motorbike mm. gang or something. They was in there, a couple of lads who'd done a like, really bad robbing, someone got killed. Some ex-copper in there who got done for a ship capsized and fucking God knows how much gear was on there, like a thousand kilos. And every time it washed up on the coast, he was getting recharged. And he was a police officer, but just found that world more, that either the money or just found the world better. Do you remember just, his name? No. No. Don't. I can't remember his fucking name. And he was a... How yeah. did you feel in there though? Like you're a normal lad from Essex. Do you know what? I got on with people. I took people face value. Yeah. So I got on with people really quickly. And I think birds of a feather do flock together in there. Yeah. So I hung around with people that were like me, Cockneys. Yeah. A lot of, like, there was a lot of people like me in Loudon Grange where I spent a lot of my time. Like, that's probably one of the better prisons I went and the, and the good laughs I had, all like blokes. But uh, I got on with older people. But I think, so I was lucky. So A is shit, but I was lucky because they put a big A on your door. You got a single cell then. You're not sharing a cell. Like when you first get into Worm and Scrubs, you've got like ten blokes in a dorm. So people sort of left me alone. I looked like a fucking little fanny, but people left me alone. Think why is he A And people would ask me mm. when, and I'd just say because you know I dropped a bag of money off in a case, and that in that case there's so much drugs and money involved that they're saying I've got funds to break out, but obviously with me, but with certain people that is needed in in that world, like a, a massive drug case like that. Did you ever have the fear laying at night going someone's gonna attack you for some reason? No, I, no, because I was in single cell a hell of a lot of my sentence. You know, when I went to, I went to an open prison and so Belmarsh was the worst as in pressure. And then you all walk around the yard on a Sunday afternoon and you, got your eyes open and all that but once you get a little gang of mates like when I was in Loudon Grange you've got a little gang of mates and you're just in your little bubble yeah. but I went to an open prison and it was a really bad sex offender one really bad and it's the only prison you sign a bit of paper saying if you're bullies sex offenders but historic ones like blokes have wrapped uh, there was a bloke in there normal looking bloke fit looking bloke wrapped a girl up in cling film <laughs> done what he'd done with her for four yeah. days wrapped in cling film put her in a loft and that and you're sharing like dinner tables with these in the open prison. And that's the only place I thought to myself, fuck. And when you go to that place, you're in a dorm straight away. With what, you're in a dorm with these people? In the open prison. You're joking But mate. I was told, you go to the open prison or you wait. So I've got my decat, this is. So yeah. you're allowed to go out. How long did it take you to get your decat? I got it rel rel relatively quick. I got it with 30 months, got my decat, and I was in Loudoun Grange because I was Loudon Grange opened in super enhanced wings and then I was opening a super enhanced prison in Woolwich. So it was piloted and I, I didn't misbehave. I had a laugh and a joke, but I didn't do drugs. I didn't do, like, do any dodgy stuff. Mm. I didn't fight, I just played football. Yeah. Like, and really enjoyed. And I think like school, how I coped in school, like having a laugh and a joke and I was one of the better footballers. Yeah. Not by any means the best. Mm. Some of the fucking footballers in there. Yeah. One bloke I played football with, his manager used to run used to go to the nightclub just so he could keep an eye on him mm. to take him home because he was that fucking good. Yeah. And he didn't support the football team. Mm. It's mad, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, there was times like in there and I just thought to myself, fucking hell, this is about... A, a bloke used to give me tuna wraps and I'd, I was a gym orderly in there. He used to make me tuna wraps because he was um, worked in the kitchen. So I'd open the fire exit, sneak him in the door, mm. get me tuna wrap, he'd, he'd train. Big Jamaican geezer. Mm. 
squatting 300k, you know, invite me around for a cup of tea. I'll go around, he's have a cup of tea, didn't think nothing of it. And then a few little stories and the screw, I got really pally with the gym screw in there because I got so pally with people in there and it come out, he was a rapist. Come out, he fucking uh, got touched some kid up and all that and I thought, fuck. But they offered me, going back, sorry, they offered me, I can go to this open prison, which is dodgy. The prisoners yeah. told me, not the screw, yeah. told me that's a shit prison. Yeah. But it was in the middle of nowhere in Lincolnshire on a farm, countryside as far as I can see, it was like paradise. But I'd be out before Christmas on my first home leave, three day home leave, just before Christmas. And I thought, I can't, what yeah. I need, what, I can't put up with them yeah. not to see my kids. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, what fucking idiot. Yeah. And then the next move, they said, might be in three months time. So you might not get to see your kids because you do a three month lie down, you might not get to see your kids for another six months. Mm. So I thought, I'll go to the open prison, see how it is. And I liked the surroundings, really, loads of wildlife there. So I thought, fine. I used mm. to do laps of the prison, got really pally with a bloke from Lincoln who's died now but he uh he like he was an old time like robber arm robber thing yeah. and and uh, like proper and uh yeah he's just uh but that prison was like people friending you and they were just bad rapists and there was fucking like, i met a, um a, a bloke he done he was one of the first people to do the graph robbery he was a serbian geezer and you know when you're sitting there talking to someone you think this is a fucking serious yeah. bloke yeah like no hesitation whatsoever. Yeah. So that was in Loudon Grange, and um, and I'm shouting across the thing to him. I said, "Well, I tell you what, fucking, you can go and Google me. You mm. can't, you can't. Let's go and Google you." And he's like, put his head down. I thought, "Yeah, you fucking idiot." Yeah. But if I didn't say that, he would have like he would have ended up like beating me up. Or yeah. do you know, you yeah, just yeah, got yeah, yeah. you got to front things, which was such a shit shit way to be. But how are you earning I, money in there? You're, you're working there. So Jim Aldley was yeah. the best job because you do the um, you do the weekend shift and we'd all, so say for instance, we'd all have to work weekends and the screw wasn't in. So you'd all tick yourself in, but we had a little thing. One bloke go and sit there. They weren't allowed to use the weights weekend, but mm. all the other stuff. One bloke would sit there and it'd be your weekend, sit there and you tick everyone else in. So we done like 30 quid. Yeah. And on family, family send your money in, but you don't need a lot of money in there. But the town visit things, like in the end, I was in a house shared house with a screw in there and other prisoners on the prison ground with a kitchen and that and they're rehabilitating you to learn how to get back in society mm. and I, I i done really well because i was like I, I went from six different prisons segregation to super like the super max the prison within a prison and then a decat all within four and a half years but it was just behaving i just yeah. behaved i didn't Take the piss. Uh, no, screws, were, there was good screws and bad screws. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's their fucking, it's their house. You can't, yeah. you can't do anything. And were you counting down the days? Did you know you were doing four and a half years? Did they give you a date, a deadline day? Say, you know what, that's the date you're going to be leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get a bit of paper with uh, how many days you're going to do, how many weeks, how many years, and that's the day you're getting out. So luckily for me, I knew if I don't fuck about, that's the day I'm getting out. But yeah. there's... There's IPP sentences now where people don't know when they're going to get out. They get an IPP for What's years. What's an IPP stand it's, for? It's a bit of a, uh, it's a it's, I think it's a, an American thing. IPP, it was in, oh, I don't know what it is. But it's basically saying they're not going to give you they a give you They give you five years IPP. Yeah. And then after the five years, they start to look about getting you out of prison. But right. you're you're in a BCAT. Yeah. So it's going to take you years to get to a DCAT and get out. Yeah. But yeah, it's like an indeterminate, I don't know. And what's the, when you got out, tell me that feeling of when you, what was it, was it the, the big day you knew you were getting out? What was that feeling? Yeah, like? I was uh, in the decat and I was, uh, didn't really sleep and then my sister was coming to pick me up with my kids and my brother. Uh, you know, you'd see it happen now and again, you think, oh, that's me soon. And uh, because I'm going out now, I was going out for a good, just over a year on home leaves and things that like I wouldn't have met my missus now if I didn't go to prison so mm. good things do come yeah, out of yeah, it I yeah. went I was staying at a friend's house the one who got raided mm. I stayed at his house when I got out and uh, there was another guy standing there nothing to do with prison he was just standing there and his mm. girlfriend's sister is my missus now she's mm. turned up to see her sister and I thought oh, she's nice yeah. <laughs> so yeah there is good things good do things come, come from, you've got to yeah. look at the silver linings but yeah that day of actually getting out it was like the first home leave was hard yeah because everyone wants a PCR. I yeah. want to see my kids and I'm driving around all these different places. Mm. Like my, uh, who was driving me around? My mate was, I think. Come to see that one, that one, that one. And then my kids are getting ratty, is that enough? And when I went back, I thought, oh man, I should have spent that with my kids. Yeah. But then the second one, I said to everyone, I'm not doing nothing, I'm spending it with my kids. Mm. 
but it was um, actual getting out and the release. It's it's just as scary as well. Like my mum said, uh, used to say to me, I used to go around my mum's. I'd stand at a mate's house, and I'd go around my mum's and watch her telly. Go in the living room, watch her telly. And then when she'd come home from work and all that, I'd say, see you later and go back home. Mm. And she supposedly said to like my brother and sisters, like, what the fuck? He's coming around watching my telly. Yeah. Then just going home. And they're like, oh, he's institutionalised properly. Yeah. Probably still thinks he's in prison. And yeah. I I went back to scaffolding really quickly. And then uh, thought, oh, this ain't for me. Do you know when you think, I've been, everything I've been through, I feel like I'm going backwards, not, not thinking... You know, if I stayed at scaffolding and never went to, uh, never got involved in crime, mm. the house that my bought with my kid's mum, I know we split up, but that that I think I looked a little while ago and it's like three hundred and eighty grand. Mm. Imagine sitting in there with mm. three hundred grand in your pocket. Yeah, like this is what I try and say to people. You think it's that 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 world? There's no good comes from that. Well, everyone glamorises that world. Yeah, and everyone I've met have all been banged up, but left with nothing. Nothing. And everyone gets banged up. Everyone, <laughs> you whoever you are. Yeah. I met a geezer when I was in prison, big like, big drug dealer. He had four million pound cash mm. around him when he got nicked. Mm. And they just fucking took it. Yeah. Simple as that. What lesson, Frank, if you can give to anyone who's listening to this? What what life lesson? What life just, lesson can you give to you anyone know what? listening, thinking about maybe they might be in it now. Yeah. Or they're thinking about doing it to earn more of a pound note. It, it it's it won't ever last. Nothing lasts. You'll be chasing. They're in it for money, and fucking money's infinity. So you'll be chasing it forever. And I've I've had a friend who's been shot, and you know, and my code has got twenty eight years. So if I carried on, like being honest, when I stepped away, I didn't get arrested and all that. Probably not. And then what? You know, what am I doing? Like, and a couple of years down the line, I've moved up the chain, and then you're looking at a thirty, yeah. and then your kids and your grandkids are growing up, literally having a life without you. Yeah. But it's you know I. It's hard to say because you don't know people's upbringings, do you? A lot of these, you know, some kids brought up with criminal around him, he's going to be a criminal. But just uh, the shit, if you if you want to not go to your brother's funeral, if you want your kids to grow up without without their dad there, like my daughter burnt her hand on a, on a thing once and come into a prison visit, what can I do? Nothing. Yeah. When I was going back off home leaves, you, got a, you can't be a dad, you can't be a son, you just got to be... You know, all that shit happened with my brother. I put that so deep, deep down in me, I've probably not dealt with it to this yeah, day. Suppressed it. And then 10 mm. years down the line, recently, the other year, I've had a fucking heart attack through an infection. And then I'm looking to do other jobs because I might not be able to go back to scaffolding. And a criminal record, criminal record. And I'd done some antiques on the side of scaffolding. And then my mates on a programme on BBC, and I, I said, I'll put a good word in for me, mate, you know, because I've had the heart attack. And they've said, oh, they, we like you. And I chatted to them and they said, uh, I told them about the criminal record. I said, oh, sorry, we can't have you on there yeah. as a dealer. And do you know, you just think, you don't realise all them years later, it still fucks you up. Luckily, touch wood, I'm fit enough to go back. And without hesitation, my boss Martin and his son yeah. Archie have said, come back to work. Brilliant. No fucking questions yeah. asked, come back to work. Brilliant. And I've been back to work a couple of weeks, doing all right, touch wood. Yeah, good for you, mate. Do you know what's interesting is that when you're involved in this, it's not you getting banged up and getting a nine on doing four and a half. It's the knock-on effect for your kids, for your mum and Fair, dad, yeah. for you when you're coming out, can't yeah. get jobs again because of that. Yeah. Have you ever thought about a lot of people do change their names afterwards? Because like you said a minute ago, you go and Google, Google your name. Yeah. I've Frank asked Google. Burn, bang. Yeah. <sighs> I've asked Google to um take it down they said it's in the public interest yeah okay so and your and your and your license as well would you ever change your surname no just leave it as is no yeah. I, you know i'm doing these i'm owning what i am yeah. and if someone you know I, I never really like so when you come out of prison you don't really like talking about it yeah. and then i remember sitting in hospital when i had the heart attack through an infection i remember sitting there thinking watching the nurses thinking like now that's a job mm. you can go and make as much money as you want and now that is some, and I thought I need to do something. No matter what I do, I want to help people. Yeah. And then I got chatting to a mate, uh, the, the, the prison screw, yeah. rang him up, how are you? And he's all telling him about my heart and all that. Because we used to train together. Got to a point in that prison with all the sex offenders that I was training with him. And prisoners go, why are you training with him? I said, because I know what he's in for. Yeah. I've, I've had like four mates who have ended up being like, God knows yeah. anyway. Yeah. And then he said, why don't you, Start, he knew somebody had done podcasts. He said, why don't you do that? He said, because you're so passionate about, yeah. you know, this is, luckily I'll see it coming. The only good thing, I've gone through all this shit and I don't want no one to feel sorry for me because I put myself yeah. there. 
But I will see it coming a mile off with my son, yeah. with my daughter's boyfriend, my son's mate. I will see it coming a mile off. And I'm strong enough and can own it enough to go and tell a bloke, yeah. stay away from my fucking son, I don't give a fuck who you are. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not a fighter and all that, but, mm. I, I, you know, I can look a geezer in the eye yeah. and, and tell him. Yeah. And you going back to changing the name of that, no, it, it's, it has made me who I am today. I regret it massively, because mm. I didn't go to my brother's funeral. Mm. I put my family, for, my, after my brother died, my parents come and visited me, my mum and dad, which is really rare, because they've been split up for God knows how many mm. years. And Dodge, they aged overnight. Yeah. When I mean aged, I looked at them and I was like, fuck yeah. me, they look like my grandparents. Yeah. So, and they yeah. wasn't together, so. These are the things, I and like, that's the truth yeah, of what really happens. That's what I'm liking with this conversation, it's pure truth. The only reason I mention that surname thing, because I keep hearing other people do change in their surname, but I think you're coming from an angle going, I did what I did, yeah. I'm a normal kid, yeah. there's lots of normal kids out there about to get caught up yeah. in any of this stuff. I'm just letting you know that you will not come out without being banged up. No. Yeah. No, these geezers, are, like, they've been shot, they get, they're being killed for yeah. nothing. Yeah. These gangbangers all shoot yeah. each other in London. What's it, it's for nothing, mm. for a postcode. If it, what's interesting, you look back and go, you know, anyone looking at this go, oh yeah, Frank got caught with, you know, mm. he passed on 328,000 pounds and he got, yeah. they got caught with 299 kilos of it's cocaine. It's all glamour around it. It's all it, glamour it? around it, yeah, yeah. But actually your little part mm. wasn't a big part on the whole, the whole no. thing, you know, no. when you look at it like that, but you've yeah. had a big punishment for it. But it's, it's due punishment. Yeah. I think I was lucky because my code has got 28 years, dropped to 23 years, like yeah. the main conspirators, mm. and a couple got off. But I just paid the massive price. Yeah, what massive. happens? You play with fire, you get burnt. Frankie, where can people find you? Instagram. Um, I've got one of them LinkedIn things, but that's on my Instagram as well. But yeah. it's just so your Instagram, Instagram. Instagram handles called uh, Frankie St. Uh, so Frankie with an I E S T ten. Yeah, it looks like Frankie established ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I done it, I thought, oh, fuck, that looks <laughs> shit. <laughs> Frankie, I've got to yeah. say, mate, I really do appreciate you coming yeah, down no, all the way from for, Essex. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, and I, I really and like your day. honesty, and hopefully yeah. a lot of people listening to this will learn lessons from it. Yeah, hopefully they will. Yeah, you're a good man. Cheers, Dodge. Cheers, Frankie. Cheers, mate. <laughs>